โรงเรียนอัดสัมชันสมุดปราการวิชาคอมพิวเตอร์มัธยมศึกษาปีที่6ใช้โปรแกรม SketchUp สอนโดยมิตรปิยธิดาและมาสเซอร์เจอร์วินในการเก็บคะแนนวิชาคอมพิวเตอร์เราจะเก็บคะแนนก่อนมิดเทอม40คะแนนเทสมิดเทอม10คะแนนคะแนนหลังมิดเทอม40คะแนนและสองไฟนอล10คะแนนในส่วนของรายละเอียดของชิ้นงานคะแนนที่เกิดขึ้นนักเรียนดูนะคะในชิ้นงานที่1 10คะแนนชิ้นงานที่2 10คะแนนเทสห้าชิ้นที่3 5นะคะแล้วก็ชิ้นงานการเปิดตู้อีก5คะแนนแล้วก็ทำแบบฝึกหัดในหนังสือ5คะแนนคะแนนมิดเทอม10คะแนนส่วนที่เหลือเป็นในส่วนของคะแนนหลังมิดเทอมชิ้นงานประมวลความรู้จะเป็นการนำชิ้นงานที่เราสร้างก่อนหน้านี้หรือเป็นชิ้นงานก่อนมิดเทอมมาประกอบและตกแต่งเป็นห้องต่างๆเช่นห้องครัวห้องนอนห้องรับแขกใบงานจะเป็นในส่วนของการอธิบายการสร้างชิ้นงานคู่มือโปรเจกต์เป็นการอธิบายการสร้างโปรเจกต์ของชิ้นงานในส่วนของคะแนนโปรเจกต์จะเป็นการสร้างบ้าน1หลังด้วยโปรแกรม SketchUp เราเข้าใจในหลักการให้คะแนนแล้วเรามาเริ่มในส่วนของการเรียนรู้ครั้งที่1ในเรื่องของเครื่องมือโปรแกรมเมื่อเราเรียนรู้ในส่วนของเครื่องมือต่างๆของโปรแกรม SketchUp แล้วและทำแบบฝึกหัดท้ายบทด้วยนะคะ Hello welcome to our class with Miss p i a t i d a and Master j e r m y Now this morning we are going to learn about SketchUp The question is what is SketchUp SketchUp is a 3D modeling computer program for a wide range of drawing applications such as architectural, interior design, landscape architecture, civil and mechanical engineering, film and video game design. When you first run SketchUp, the Welcome to SketchUp dialog box appears, as shown here. In the Welcome to SketchUp dialog box, you can choose a template for your model. In this lesson, you will learn selecting a template, exploring the SketchUp interface, and learning how to use SketchUp tools. Now, let's go to selecting a template. Every model in SketchUp is based on a template, which has predefined settings for your model's background and units of measurement. Here's how to select a template in the Welcome to SketchUp dialog box. At the top of the dialog box, the default template field tells you the name of the currently selected template. To change the template, click the Choose Template button or click the arrow next to the Template tab. The Templates tab opens with a list of templates that come with SketchUp as shown here below. Now let's explore the SketchUp interface. When SketchUp opens, ready for you to start creating a 3D model. You see a screen that includes the following. First, Title bar, second, menu bar, third, getting started toolbar, fourth, drawing area, fifth, status bar, sixth is the measurement box, and seven is the default tray. Now let's go to title bar. The title bar contains the standard window controls like close, minimize, and maximize, and the name of the currently open file. When you start SketchUp, The name of the currently open file is untitled, indicating that you have not yet saved your work. Next, menu bar. The majority of SketchUp tools, commands, and settings are available within the menus on the menu bar. The menus are, if you are using Mac, we have File, Edit, View, Camera, Draw, Tools, Window, and Help. Now let's go to Getting Started Toolbar. When you begin using SketchUp, the Getting Started Toolbar is the one you see by default. It contains the basic tools you need to begin creating 3D models. To display additional toolbars, select View, Toolbars. 
In the Toolbars dialog box that opens, select the toolbars you want to see and click Close. In Mac OS X, you can display tool palettes by selecting View, Tool Palettes. Let's go to the Drawing Area. The Drawing Area is where you create your model. The 3D space of the Drawing Area is identified visually by the Drawing Access, which provide a sense of direction in 3D space while you work. The Drawing Area also contains a simple model of a person to give you a sense of 3D space. Status Bar when you're getting started with SketchUp, the two important elements on the status bar are the tips in the middle and the measurements box on the right. As you can see, it's right over here and over here. Now let's go to the full tray. In Windows only, on the right side of the screen, as you can see, it's right here you see a tray of panels, including the instructor, materials, styles, and so on. The default tray appears when you open SketchUp, but you can close it by clicking the close button in the upper right of the tray. Toggle the tray so it's visible or hidden via the window default tray submenu. Now, let's learn how to use SketchUp tools. So as you use SketchUp, the instructor and the status bar give you pointers on using each tool. The instructor teaches you how to use the currently selected tool. To turn on the instructor shown here, it's right here. Select window, instructor, which you find in the default tray or click the question mark icon in the status bar. Here's what the instructor has offered, an animation that shows basic use of the selected tool, a description of what the tool does, steps for using the tool which correspond to the animation, modifier keys that enable the tool perform additional functions. A link to help center articles about advanced function of the tool. Now, here is the viewing of the SketchUp Quick Reference Card. The Quick Reference Card is an easy to print guide to all the SketchUp tools and their modifier keys. Keep it handy as you start using SketchUp and you'll learn to model quickly and efficiently. Here's what the quick reference card looks like and you can search it into Google. Now, let's try to create your first model. So, we're going to create a 3D box. Now, first, if you have never done 3D modeling in SketchUp or any other modeling program, the following steps offer a quick overview of the basics. In the Getting Started toolbar, select Rectangle Tool. On the ground plane, in the space between the red and green axis, click the Rectangle Tool cursor. Then move your cursor to the right and click again. A rectangle appears on the ground as shown on the picture. Now, next tool that you're going to use is the Push and Pull Tool. So on, on the Getting Started toolbar, select the Push and Pull Tool and place the Push and Pull cursor over the rectangle you just created as shown in the following figure. Click and drag your rectangle up into a 3D shape. Keep an eye on the measurements box and release the cursor when your shape is about 5 feet tall. Without clicking or selecting anything, Type 6 and press Enter. Notice how the height of your shape changed to exactly 6 feet tall. And the value you entered appears in the measurement box. In the Getting Started toolbar, select the Orbit tool. Place the Orbit cursor above your shape. Then click and hold while you move the mouse down. Notice how the view of your shape changes as shown in the following figure. Practice clicking and dragging with the Orbit tool as much as you like. It's a pretty fun tool.
Now, let's explore the tools of SketchUp. The first tool that we're going to explore is Orbit tool. Orbiting is like holding an object and turning it around. When you use this tool, click and hold the mouse button and move the mouse around. Where your cursor is on the screen, you will be center of rotation. It takes some getting used to, so try using Orbit with your cursor in different places. Here's a much easier way to orbit. If you have a three button mouse, just press and hold the middle mouse button while moving the mouse. If your middle mouse button is a scroll wheel, just click the wheel and hold it down. Next is pan tool. Panning means sliding your view up and down, left or right. It's similar to moving a piece of paper across a desk. To pan the view, active pan and hold and drag the mouse. If you have a three bottom mouse you can pan by pressing the shift while orbiting this means holding the middle mouse button pressing shift and dragging the mouse around next zoom tool click and drag the mouse up to zoom in down to zoom out with a wheel mouse you can scroll the mouse wheel up or down to zoom if you are using your scroll wheel place your mouse where you want to zoom to be centered it sounds confusing but try zooming with your cursor in different places to see what this means if you zoom so far in or out that you can't see your model anymore click zoom extends that will fit everything back on your screen next select shortcut key spacebar you need to use select objects edge and or faces before the objects can be moved copied scaled etc you can also use select to erase objects select them then press the delete key when you active select and click on an object it will be highlighted you can select more than one object by pressing shift or control while clicking shift toggles what select if something is already selected, shift and select it. Control option will only add what's selected. When you want to select multiple objects, it's often easier to use a selection window. This means holding the mouse and dragging a rectangle around what you want to select. The way you drag the window makes a difference. Now let's go to line. This tool draw, of course, line, also known in SketchUp as edges. Click the first endpoint then click the second endpoint if you're finished making lines but the tool has started a new line press the escape key you can also activate a new tool if you ever want to cancel the current tool if you draw lines that form a closed shape like a triangle or rectangle sketchup will automatically create a face inside the line rectangle or letter R on your keyboard. To draw a rectangle, click one corner and then click the opposite corner. If you want to draw a square, wait to see the square pop up before clicking the second corner. Circle or letter C on your keyboard. To draw a circle, first click the center point and click an outside point. Next, arc tools. There are three ways to draw an arc. The simplest is two-point arc. The shortcut key is letter A, which creates an arc in three clicks. The first click sets the start point, then the end point, then a point in the middle. Like with circles, an arc is actually made of short line segments, and you can change the number of sides like you would for a circle. The second arc tool is arc. First, sets the center point, then the two points at either end. Pi is similar, but fills in a pie-shaped face. Polygon. When you first active polygon, before clicking any points, you'll see the number of sides listed in the sides box located by default below the sketchup window if you want a different number of sides type the number and press enter for example if you enter three you'll create a triangle if you enter six you'll create a hexagon then create the polygon like a circle first the center point then an outside point after a polygon is created you can still change its number of sides. Enter 8s to change the polygon to an octagon. 
for example. Next is Eraser or a letter E on your keyboard. This tool erases edges like lines. If you erase an edge of a face, the face will also disappear. Redrawing that line will replace the face. To erase more than one edge, you can click on each edge separately or you can keep the left mouse button press while you drag the mouse over the edge you want to erase. This tool doesn't work on faces. To erase a face, you can right click on it, click the face using your right mouse button and choose erase. You can select a face and press the delete key. Next is move tool or letter M. This tool is used for both moving and copying. First, select what you want to move, then click start point and end point for the move. The link box below the SketchUp window will show you the move distance. You can change this by entering a new number. If you want to make copy, press the control key or option key while moving. Just press control or option once, you don't have to hold it down. After the, the copy is created, you can enter two times to make two copies. Eight times to make eight copies, etc. You can also enter a distance from the first to the last copy, like 120. If you want to create four copies space evenly within this distance, enter four slash. Note the slash symbol. Next, rotate tool or a letter Q on your keyboard. This tool is used for rotating and copying. First, select what you want to rotate. Then the protector appears. Place this at the center of rotation. Then click a start point and end point for the rotation. The angle is shown in the angle box below the SketchUp window. You can change this by entering new number. If you want to make a copy, press the control or option key while rotating. After the copy is created, you can enter two times to make two copies or etc. You can also enter an angle from the first to last copy like 360. If you want to create 12 copies space evenly within this distance, enter 12 slash. Again, note the slash symbol. Now the next one is paint bucket or letter B on your keyboard. This is the tool you use to paint faces. When you click it, the materials window opens. There are several collections of solid colors available. Now, for your first project, you're going to create a simple house like this. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something today. See you again to our next lesson. Keep safe everyone.